What is going on everybody and welcome to another gameplay video. I hope you guys are doing exceptionally well. I hope you had a fantastic weekend. As you guys know, I was out of town visiting my grandmother. We had a fantastic time. It was a beautiful weekend. We got to walk all around Richmond, Virginia, a beautiful, beautiful area, uh, and got to see where my parents met, which was actually kind of cool. But regardless, today we are going to be jumping into some Quandrix Magecraft. Before we do that, I just want to do a quick reminder that today, or excuse me, this week, uh, I believe Wednesday the 28th is our last day for the giveaway of a Strixhaven bundle. We are giving one away for free to one lucky person on one of our five platforms. Please go check out the details. Uh, there is a video on our channel. If you just go to our homepage of our channel, you can see that there, which gives you some, some links and some details on how to do that. Uh, but good luck to everybody. I'm really excited about that. And let's go ahead and jump into the deck. Now, uh, I'm gonna be very clear and very upfront that first of all, I took this list from Hello Good Game. Um, watched his video on it, really enjoyed it. Uh, I've also played against this list a lot and I've seen a couple of different variants, but this is the one that I think at least has the most solid foundation. So we're gonna start here and we're gonna see how things go. Uh, the idea is obviously Magecraft. We're gonna try and trigger that as much as we can. One of the big payoff cards in blue is Archmage Emeritus. This card is incredible. Four mana, two, two, doesn't sound great, but whenever you cast an instant or sorcerer, you get to draw a card, which means we're just gonna be drawing into more and more action as we go through. Now, as we have seen with different decks, the Throne of Eldraine uh, adventure cards really, really work well in these Magecraft decks. They provide you not only with a creature on the back end, but also just a nice little interactive or creature buffing spell, something like that on the front end. So very, very helpful. Uh, we also have Dragon's Guard Elite, which is an absolute power powerhouse if you can keep this thing around for a while. Now to help keep that thing around, we'd have Snakeskin Veil, which does give Hexproof, put some counters on some things. Uh, Decisive Denial, a beautiful new instant for two mana. Target creature you control fights a creature you don't control, so great against the other opposing creature decks but also great against the control decks. Counter target, non-creature spell, unless this controller pays three, we can maybe hit a well-timed sweeper or something along those lines with decisive denial as well. We've of course got into the Royal is another way to kind of draw some cards and bounce some non-land stuff to the opponent's hand along with the Brazen Borrower. Uh, we've got Lovestruck Beast, Kazandu Mammoth is just a nice big beater. Uh, one of my favorite of the command cycle, probably my second favorite, is Quandrix Command. Instant for three mana, return a creature or Planeswalker to its owner's hand, counter target artifact or enchantment spell, put two plus one counters on target creature, and target player shuffles up to three cards from their graveyard into their library. My assumption is we will be using the first and third ability most often. However, uh, things like Banishing Light, things like that we're going to be seeing in these mono white decks and having access to a counter for artifacts and enchantments. Very, very flexible, very, very strong. Uh, we also have Quandrix Cultivator here. When it enters the battlefield, you can search your library for a basic forest or island, put it onto the battlefield, and then shuffle. Just a really nice ramper. It helps keep our spells moving in the right direction uh, and hopefully doubling up so we can get extra draws here. We've, of course, got the Great Hinge as well. Just a really nice gain life kind of spell. It ramps us. It does everything we need it to do, and it really helps us draw cards on the creature end. So there is a world where we start drawing cards for every card that we play other than lands, which is kind of nice. Uh, as far as lands go, we've got some islands, some forests, the channel, uh, pathway, Ketria Trium, of course, uh, to, to cycle away here, uh, and then some fabled passages to search up the lands that we need. But this is it, guys. This is the deck. I, again, have not played this yet. I did take this list from Hello Good Game, so credit where credit is due. It is not to me, but I'm excited to try this list out. I have high hopes for this one. Uh, we've seen Prismari do quite well. We've even seen um, Lorehold do quite well. I'm curious to see how this works out. So... Let's give it a shot. Let's jump into game one, guys. Let's see if we can get some wins with this list. And like I said, I hope you guys... Oh, <laughs> pardon me. Allow me to concede this game. That is the Wither Bloom combo deck, which I still have as my active deck. So allow me to uh, swap that really quick. Guys, I really hope you had a fantastic weekend. I know we haven't been streaming quite as much lately. Uh, did want to talk about that just a little bit throughout today. Um, there are a couple reasons for that. One, you guys have been here for a while. You know that we have had quite a number of network issues all related to our ISP who 
unfortunately is not the greatest uh and they do have a monopoly in our area which means we don't have another option for an isp it's not like we can tra transfer to a different one so we are very much stuck uh, which is not fun, but uh, it is what it is. And so we're trying to make do with that. But the trick is obviously we can't get away from them. So uh, as to that end, um, one of the major issues is that uh, while Caitlin, if you guys don't know my future fiance or my fiance now, my future wife, uh, if you guys don't know, she is a teacher and she is teaching virtually. Uh, and what that means is she's on taking a lot of bandwidth as well as me being on and trying to take a lot of bandwidth. And so streaming at the same time as her teaching does not necessarily work out too great. <laughs> um, that being said, I would like to try and move our stream time, maybe stream a little bit less, but still keep it going. Uh, we're still going to be doing the card hunt every Friday. So that is to be expected. We plan to do that this Friday for Strixhaven. I believe we're searching for Professor Onyx. Which I'm very excited about. Uh, and so we we do still plan to stream, of course, but uh, for the time being, it may be slightly less than we initially uh, had planned. Uh, now, that being said, we're still going to do some awesome gameplay and stuff like that over there. But it is very easy to just sit down and record a little bit of gameplay, which is what we are doing currently. Uh, and it works out. It's fine. Uh, it's not great, but it it is an option at least. So can't be too upset about that. We get to attack in here and really just leave up either a bounce spell or the decisive denial, um, both of which are great options. So we will uh, see how things go. We, of course, are going to be searching for a land this turn as well. And I think uh, the question is, do we get second green or second blue? I think we get second blue due to having the mammoth in hand um, and being able to essentially throw that out there. Uh, Let's go ahead and get that second blue now. That's perfectly fine. Uh, yeah. Um, and we actually just get to bounce this back, which doesn't seem excessively great, but it just means that on the turn that they play it, they're still not going to have it that much mana in terms of activation. And that's a little unfortunate. It, it would have been great to have gotten a uh, second green source there, but it is what it is. Uh, so... I do think um, we kind of want to have access to double green at some point here. So let's go ahead and throw that out there. Um, and the question becomes, do we want to play something uh, this turn or do we kind of want to wait? Um, I'm actually in the camp of waiting at the moment solely because worst case scenario, we can flash out the Brazen Borrower. This is a pretty big tell. They obviously know that we have a counter left up or something at least left up, which they are, I'm assuming, going to be playing around. They may not even drop the Pelucranos, uh, though it is a very easy counterable spell. Uh, you know, it's, it's something they can replay later, of course. And they are just going to play that out now, and that's totally fine. Um, so what do we want to do? I think we pass. Uh, I'm going to flash out the Brazen Borrower here. Uh, and the reason being, what I'd really like to be able to do, we're going to play that land. And I think we're going to Quandrix Command here, uh, which allows us to throw some counters and bounce the Pelucranos, uh, which I think is very, very good. Gonna return here. Crucially, we don't wanna throw the counters on the 1-1. One -one. Um, reason being, we do have the Love Struck Beast that obviously we hope to play at some point here, but this allows us to be quite aggressive, which I like, uh, and then again, hopefully bounce something at this point. Uh, exile with mana value three or less, okay. Um, so, we just get to counter this. Nice and easy counter. Again, hitting that sweeper, that's exactly what we wanted to be able to hit. Uh, so that was perfect. Absolutely perfect. Couldn't have planned it any better. Uh, and this does allow us to then get in for a very, very strong attack once again. And we've got the snakeskin veil, which is quite nice. Um, now, I think obviously first things first, let's go ahead and attack in. Um, now here... We do have to be a bit careful. We don't have that counter up. We do have the Hexproof, so on the off chance that we uh, end up losing to a Sweeper or something like that, we've got, or, or excuse me, if they do have a um, a uh, 
Um, why can't I think of the name? A kill spell. A direct kill spell. Uh, we do have an option here at least. I really should have gotten blue there. That was a bit of a mistake. Being able to hit the end of the royal uh, and open up that plus the snakeskin veil, or excuse me, either or, uh, is very much key. We didn't do that. That was a mistake. But again, literally the first time I have played with this deck, so I'm not feeling too bad about our position. We do have lethal next turn. Um, so they got to do something. They have got to do something, uh, which is great. Uh, and this Quandrix command does mean that even if they kill the Brazen Borrower for whatever reason, we have got an out. Okay. So you do get to take the extra turn. That's perfectly fine. Uh, there wasn't really much we could have done about that anyway, so it's actually okay that we did what we did. Um, but again, now they do get to play maybe Pelucranos or something along those lines, or just chain Epiphanies. If they've got multiples, they can just chain those out, uh, which is not good for us, <laughs> obviously. Um, the only saving grace here is that we do have 20 life available for us, which is quite good. And we actually can get around the Pelucranos activation if they decide to use that. Uh, we actually do have that Snakeskin Veil allowing us to provide uh, some Hexproof to something here. So we might be able to, to squeeze out a win here. Let's go ahead and put a 1-1 counter and give it Hexproof. They then no longer can fight it, which is fantastic. And now they have got one mana up, and that is it. That is it. Okay. So... Uh, this should be game for us. What we can do, uh, let's do this, return, and again, we're going to do counters. We're going to return the Pelucranos and put some counters here, I believe. Uh, we then also get to Into the Royal, which is going to bounce one of their tokens, and then we actually just get to attack in here. And no matter what they block, we get the win. So look at that. A very, very nice sequence. Again, slight mistake not getting that blue mana uh, off of the the Quandrix uh, Apprentice or whatever it is. But uh, still a very nice sequence, and we ended up getting the win. That's a pretty strong start from a deck we have not yet played before. So I'm very excited about that. Let's go ahead and jump into a game two. Guys, as always, we're probably going to shoot for right around 30 minutes. We will see how long we can get this deck going for. Uh, but usually that seems to be a nice time to get at least, a, you know, three, four games in, something along those lines. So hopefully, hopefully we can manage some more wins with this deck. But I very much enjoy it. I think this is a very, very fun one. Uh, what do we have here? Um, you know, I, I think we can keep this pretty safely. Um, we do have a bit of a, a decision to make off the face. Uh, we can go for the Fabled Passage, or we can go for the Mammoth uh, Tap Land on turn one. Now, I kind of am leaning towards the Mammoth on turn one as the land. Uh, the reason being, that allows us to have two green and two blue available since we can get the second blue off of that Fabled Passage. The plan will also be most likely on turn three to leave up the Decisive Denial not to play anything, uh, and then turn four play the Cultivator, excuse me, not the Apprentice. And so I like to think that might be the best play. Um, but again, we will we'll see. We will see. Onion Knight kind of taking their time, uh, which is, is fine. Um, but we'll see if we can get another win out of this deck. I very much love the Magecraft ability. There, are, It seems like there are a lot of different paths that you can go with Magecraft. Uh, obviously, we have played, like, basically Magecraft in almost every color combination. <laughs> no, like two or three uh, different color combinations so far. Uh, and I love that. I think it's fun because you can apply it to almost any uh, circumstance, which is just great. So... We will see how it goes. Uh, let's go ahead and do this. We do have a bit of a question here. We could just play out the Dragon's Guard Elite. Chances are it gets shocked or frostbitten. Um, or we can just pass and leave up maybe into the Royal uh, or Decisive Denial um, and maybe save the, dra the, the Dragon's Guard Elite for a, a later time. I'm gonna take the Dragon's Guard Elite play um, this does take a burn spell, most likely, uh, but we're going to do the best we can uh, to, to threaten. We're going to try and burn up their burn spells, essentially. Uh, the Cultivator, thankfully, is at a very nice... Um, yep, there's that Frostbite. The Cultivator does sit very nicely at 4 toughness, uh, which does make it a little bit more convenient, we will say. 
Um, given that they can't just frostbite it. Uh, it doesn't work that well uh, against us, so that's pretty good. Uh, I'm actually gonna pass and take the one here. Uh, if they just don't have a play, that's fine, but this is a much more exciting thing to be bouncing, uh, given that we do want to play out the Cultivator this coming turn. So let's go ahead and throw that out there. Drawing quite a bit of land here, so with that in mind, let's go ahead and do this. We're going to search up an island, giving us our double blue as well, and then we'll just cultivate her, which again just sits very, very nicely at four toughness. It's not perfect, but it does allow us to uh, at least make them kind of double up or something along those lines. Now, if they do attack in with the Fervent Champion, we do have to be very cautious. They could very easily just have another Frostbite. Uh, and if they time it correctly, we will not be able to trade off with that Fervent Champion. So we may, if they just attack in with the Fervent Champion, just take it. Uh, it might be the best play. But instead, it looks like they are going to just play some stuff out here. And again, unfortunately, not getting a whole lot in terms of land, or, or excuse me, in terms of actual playable stuff, uh, which isn't great for us. Um... We can just fight something off here, which is not a bad play. Um, and I like it now better than any other time, given that the damage will then be reduced uh, for the next turn. So let's let's fight off one of these Fervent Champions. All that means is this is now a 3-3. Three, three. It also means that these do not buff each other, uh, which means if they don't have the Frostbite, they do not have a safe attack. Uh, or they, if they have the Ember Cleave, I guess they do still, but, uh, ooh, okay, well, Goldspan Dragon changes things, uh, obviously. Uh, in that case, I do think we just take the block. Go ahead and try and trade that off. Um, and there's the end to the Royal, uh, which I do think we just have to fire off here. Well, I guess we can wait. We can wait. Um... The trick is if they just have like an Ember Cleave, we're, we're not in great shape here. <laughs> um, let that resolve. I'm going to go ahead and bounce the Goldspan Dragon here. They just get to replay this. We do have to keep that in mind, of course, but it is the biggest damage dealer on the field. So we're going to try and do that. And we get a Snakeskin Veil, which is not super helpful. Um, going to hit with a good bit of damage here. We just kind of have to hope to draw something here, and I don't know what we could draw, to be honest. They've got as much mana as they want, uh, and some very, very powerful plays. Ooh, and there's the Tor brand as well. All right. Um, okay, well... This is technically a card that can help dig us out, but it's not going to do it today, and unfortunately that is a loss for us. Go ahead and concede, and we will move on to the next game. So we were sitting at one and one. I think um, given maybe some better draws, we could have been okay. Uh, but unfortunately, in that instance, we just did not have much. Uh, and that's okay. It happens. So let's go ahead and jump into a third game, sitting at a nice one and one with Quandrix Magecraft. I really enjoy this deck. I really do. I like... I love the instant speed kind of nature of this whole list. Um, obviously, certain things you want to play on your turn, but a lot of it you don't have to. And I just love that. I absolutely love that. So, do we keep? Do we keep? Do we keep? Um, this is a curious hand. I'm going to try it. Uh, I don't feel super strongly. We have way too many lands in hand, not enough big spells, but we do get to play the Lovestruck Beast out early. Uh, and, oh no, unfortunately we're going to be drawing a lot of land, I think, uh, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and throw that out there. Next turn, if we just don't draw anything, we have Fabled Passage to throw out there. Oh my goodness. Uh, yeah. Here we go. <laughs> uh, and I'm actually going to get the, the second green source here. Um, this is the Witherbloom combo, which is scary. Uh, chances are they will be able to just kind of take us out here. Um, okay, there is a play, um, <laughs> but I'm actually just going to go for the Lovestruck Beast here. Just a stronger turn three. 
And let's hope we can uh, squeeze out a win. We've got all the land in the world, so we will hit our turn four of Emer turn four emeritus, excuse me, uh, which is pretty good. But they are uh, definitely getting their combo pieces together. Now we do have ways to fight things off, of course. So decisive denial would be able to fight off the the witch. Uh, we would have to pay three life to do it. Uh, the soul steeper is also a card that could be very, very useful to just go ahead and kill off uh, as well, but we will see. Uh, this is a very interesting deck. If you guys have not seen our Witherbloom combo list, please go check it out. It's a very, very fun deck, um, and this is much more of a controlling style uh, than we have seen in, uh, in the past. Some of the time it has been, we'll say, a little bit different. Uh, let's go ahead and play the Emeritus here. Next turn, we've got the guard, uh, the Dragon's Guard plus Brazen Borrower to just bounce something, uh, which isn't amazing, but uh, this is most likely going to take either a removal spell or something along those lines. We will see. Um, and maybe not. Maybe they just don't have it. I mean, they do have the Necrotic Fumes here, but they can't actually play it. They do not have the Double Black, which is worth noting. That's the only reason I felt comfortable playing the Emeritus into this. Um, given that they've only got two other cards in hand, there's a shot, at least, uh, that we may be okay. Now here, I'm actually just going to take the damage. I'm not risking the Emeritus here. Not worth it. Uh, though, in that instance, maybe we could have. Uh, so my guess is they may have a Snakeskin Veil, honestly. Uh, given how much, uh, extra value they gain off of it, I would not be terribly surprised um, we're going to play the Dragon's Guard Elite, uh, and I think we just pass. Uh, as, as not fun as that sounds, I think we just have to pass, uh, and hope that we can get through this. The Titan, huh? Very interesting. Um... Wow, very good. Very, very good on the opponent's end here. Um, this is going to trigger regardless. I'm actually going to bounce this. They get 12 one ones off of the Titan. That was a very, very strong play by the opponent, for sure. Uh, just absolutely powerhouse play. Now we can actually do this uh, and potentially do some damage here, though we're not in a great place. I mean, regardless, we are just not in a great place. Uh, also, that was an instant. I'm realizing that they could have very easily done that in response to something and kind of saved uh, some mana there, but it is their choice, I suppose. So let's do this. Let's throw this guy out. We're going to draw a couple cards here. Worth noting that these are not legendary. We do need to keep that in mind uh, because I'll be honest and say I initially thought that it was. Um, and I think we just pass. We're going to be taking some damage here, guys. No doubt. Uh, but again, they are stuck on that black. They do not have it. So that is helpful. Hopefully they don't just have another Titan. <laughs> um, okay, so they are going to attack in. I'm going to take the attack here. Uh, or the block, excuse me. Um, I'm actually going to block with these. Uh, we've got quite a bit of stuff that can... We're, I mean, we're not in a great place. They're going to gain some life here, which means we're going to lose quite a bit of life. They're dealing 11 to us. We just die. Ugh. That was a close one. That was... I mean, not that we were anywhere close to winning, but that was a very cool, uh, kind of a slightly slower but more controlling take on the uh, the Witherbloom deck with Titan at the helm, which I thought was quite cool. That is one of my favorite cards of the new set is the the giant Titan, 10-11 uh, or whatever it is. I love that card. I think it's very, very good. But let's see if we can get one. Maybe this will this will be the last game, most likely. We are sitting right around 25 minutes, so uh, we'll do the best we can. We have not gotten more than one win, but that's okay. That is okay. This is a nice keepable hand. Um, we've got some early stuff with Into the Royal plus Lovestruck Beast. 
and then of course uh, the the cultivator plus emeritus later on. So hopefully, hopefully we can get somewhere. This is a Luris deck. We do need to keep that in mind. Uh, fair enough. Ah, my least favorite deck is here. I for those of you who don't know, I absolutely hate the cycling deck for a uh, numerous reasons. I think that the deck is very, very frustrating. Um, I think it's a fine deck, but the problem is that it just is so frustrating to deal with um, because it's le it's literally just like, well, if you've got it, you've got it. If you don't, you don't. There's no like, there's no real like, I'm not going to say decisions because that's oversimplifying it, but it's just not a very uh, exciting deck to me. Um, we will see what they want to do. I'm being more aggressive with my creatures here because chances are um, interesting. They did decide to fight those off. That's very curious. Um, I would have maybe thought differently about that, but that's perfectly fine by me. We're going to go ahead here and get probably just second blue. It uh, doesn't matter too much. We've got another Fable Passage sitting here, so I'm going to attack in. There's not too much that this deck usually does at instant speed. And we do have the end of the royal is just backup, uh, which is quite nice, especially if they have the flourishing fox or something along those lines. We can kind of deal with it. Uh, and here, honestly, I'm okay with just bouncing this to keep the pressure on. Uh, this is just something they can't replay, which is very important, and they're probably not going to want to cycle quite as much if they don't have that on the field. Uh, we, of course, do take one in that process, so... That's fine. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and do this. Um, we do kind of just need to leave up some stuff here at some point, but uh, before we... We're not in danger of just outright dying due to a Zenith Flare quite yet, so I'm going to go ahead and play the Emeritus here. Um, and truthfully, we should have attacked first, but I think it'll be okay. Um, but I do want to have this decisive denial available to us at almost any point from here on out. Um, that is going to be very, very crucial to our game plan. And potentially it would have been better to play the Cultivator out first, honestly. Uh, we would have gotten an extra land drop out of it. Next turn then we would have been at six mana, which would have meant we could play the Emeritus and then leave up the decisive denial. Um versus uh, getting this down to maybe draw a card. So I didn't sequence that properly, uh, but it's okay. We do still have a secondary play in Lovestruck Beast, so I'm not I'm not hurting for that, but uh, that is maybe a bit of a mistake on my end. Uh, but this does allow us to next turn, regardless, drop a land, play Lovestruck Beast, leave up the, that decisive denial uh, to be able to hopefully counter that Zenith Flare if it does come down. Uh, and there's the Flourishing Fox. Fair enough. Um, so let's go ahead and play this. Let's go ahead and play the Lovestruck Beast now. And we're just going to pass. We have to just kind of leave things up here uh, and see what happens. I'm a little concerned about the Zenith Flare. Ooh. That's a card we do have to deal with as well. Um, I think that means we actually need to fight this off. We're going to fight in uh, in response, basically. And see what happens. We're going to cycle first, get their counter. Makes total sense. They do only have one card in hand. Two card, well, still one card, but you know what I mean. <laughs> this just means we keep our 1-1, one, one, which means that the Lovestruck Beast can continuously attack if we'd like. They have no cards in hand. That's very, very important, actually. Um... Hmm. Well, that does kind of change things. Uh, the reality is we actually get to do a bit more this turn, potentially. So let's do this. We're going to return, and we're going to throw some counters. Return this, throw some counters here. Draws us another card, which is quite nice. Um, and then we're just going to attack in. They can just uh, cycle the Flourishing Fox if they'd like, but this means lethal is there. Uh, we... We are facing down a very powerful Zenith Flare if they have it, so we do have to be careful. But here, the the reality is they can only do one thing. 
and play that Lyris. That doesn't seem great, I will just say. Um, so we do get to attack here. Um, they do kind of have to block one of these, so we actually get to attack in with the 1-1 one, one as well. Hopefully. If they just draw Zenith Flare, we... Oh, excuse me, yes, they do get to uh, gain 3 life, don't they? Uh, that kind of sucks, but it's really not the end of the world. That was a mistake on my end, for sure, but we're going to deck thin slightly here. We're going to get a land. Um, and then we just play the Elite. And again, we're still sitting at lethal this coming turn, so I'm not I'm not stressing about that, but that was definitely a, uh, a bad attack with the 1-1. One, one. Um, but regardless, we'll see what happens. We will see what happens. Okay. That's all they can do. That's a good thing for us. Um, <laughs> um, well, let's do this first, I suppose. So this cancel. Let's do, let's do this slightly differently. Let's do this here. Unfortunately, just draw a land there. Not great. They do, of course, gain quite a bit of life there. But we do get to just fight in. They get to live, but... Again, it's pretty much Zenith Flare or Bust. Granted, they've got a ton of cycling cards in their deck, so if they just get it, they just get it. Um, that's the... Oh, they had a learn spell. Interesting. Ingenious Inspiration. Not a card I expected to see in this list, but uh, we will see. And I really did mess up there, guys. Had we just attacked in with the Emeritus and the Lovestruck Beast, we probably would have won the game this turn. Uh, so that's on me, not really the deck, uh, but that's okay. And here, it actually doesn't matter. The, the good thing about this is they can't get Zenith Flare uh, because they just can't play it. So, we did it. We did it, guys. That was awesome. I absolutely love this deck. I think it's a very fun one. We ended on a 2-2 two and two record. Not bad. I, I'm not too upset about that. Um, I think given the first time that I had played this, this deck, uh, we played it relatively well. Certainly a couple of misplays here and there, but overall not bad at all. Oh, you know what, guys? Let's uh let's really quick since we've got a mastery token. Let's go ahead and uh, utilize that really quick. We can suggest pick. All right, uh, but guys, I do recommend trying this list out. Maybe try some different uh, different um, builds, some things like that. Maybe there's some other cards that you have suggestions on. Please leave those down below. Make sure if you are not already subscribe, like the video if you did, and maybe even share it out. That would be hugely hugely helpful. For us small time creators, that makes a huge difference. But guys, thank you so much. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you very soon for another gameplay video very soon.